So I guess I started this year's garden work in mid-February when I finally came out to examine the wreckage that is city trash after a few months of winter. In the warmer months, I do this every few days and it's never done. It's, you'll see that there's still trash on the ground. No matter how long I spend out here, I will still find little cellophane pieces from cigarette packaging and pieces of lottery tickets. It's endless. Um, it's very frustrating, but it's my patch of land right now. Well, I rent it, but um, I'm in charge of it, so I try to keep it clean. This is the back corner that is incredibly overgrown in invasive vines in this horrible boxwood that I need to get a hold of this fall. Um, but I'll give you a walk around where the lot is right now as it stands. So over here I have some poppies that I'm going to move because this bed over the years um, with the tree growth has become a complete shade bed. So this bed's just going to have coleus and hosta and probably some other shady plants, but I'm definitely going to move those poppies. You can see there's beautiful moss and there's actually ferns that grow over here every year that are gorgeous. So as you get into this corner here, it does brighten up and it gets six hours of sun. I have a little patch of thyme here. It actually used to be thyme, sage, and oregano, but the thyme uh, over the years just bullied them all out. So I do need to trim that back and uh, I do eventually get to that. <laughs> it takes about a month though. And that, my friends, is literally all cigarette packaging and lottery tickets. I mean, very little else besides the occasional cup is in that bag. It's, it's crazy how much trash I found. By mid-February, I was itching to just dig some holes. So what I decided to do first was get started on a garden bed. I wanted to make a really big, beautiful cut flower bed this year. I don't know a lot about growing flowers besides what I've, you know, obsessively learned about over the winter, but experience wise, I really have only started growing flowers last year. Um, the last time I grew flowers, I think I was in the first grade. So I'm doing this bed um, not the way I would love to do them, which would be a no-till bed, but I did it just a double dig, you know, turn over the old fashioned way, the hard way, the back breaking way. Um, but it was just the way that I could do quickly, um, whereas a no-till bed, you would really ideally want that to sit over winter, um, you know, and then be ready in the spring that way. But I just wanted to get something done. So I was really pleased with what I saw once I turned over the dirt and saw just hundreds of worms. The soil is very rich and easy to dig in and I was really happy to see that. I believe that this lot used to be a very large garden um, before the previous owner had it. So I think that there's just a little magic left in the soil maybe, I'm hoping. After about a week of looking out the window at the garden bed, I decided I wanted to make it like an L shape, um, but even, so an angle. A right angle? Let's go with a right angle. I wanted to have two sides to the garden and I thought that would give us a nice little uh, bit of privacy from the street, which I'm working on ways to creatively do that um, without upsetting my landlord too much because I really hate that we're right on a busy street and that's part of the reason that so much trash gets in my yard is because there's a store right at the end of my street and I think that my house is just far enough away from that store that people are done scratching their lottery tickets and opening their packs of cigarettes and they just chuck the trash right in my yard. So hoping once there's an established garden, people may be less inclined to do that. I don't know. Anyway, here is me and my son. We are just edging out and turning over the second half of this garden bed. I think we're gonna edge this whole area out. What do you think? Gonna be good? Hide in place in the flowers? Yeah. Working on the flower bed. It looks uneven, but it actually is even, so optical illusion, but it is even. It looks skinnier on one side, right? But it's not. I measured it. We have to move all these grass clumps before we kill ourselves. And look at all the trash that's already back in my yard.
there is something I find incredibly satisfying about edging out new garden beds. Uh, my son unfortunately lacks the um, body mass to quite drive the shovel into the dirt, but uh, you know, he's doing his best. He's, uh, he gets a struggle from his mother. Um, we, we share this. It's our bond, really. Perks of him being in virtual school besides um, his school year is not at all disrupted by what's going on right now is that I can do things with him like this during the day and he can go back in the house and finish his lessons later on. We're not on a schedule. All right, you need my cameraman? Yeah. So we started edging out the new flower bed. I'm gonna go all through here with a walking path over here. And then We finished evening out the cut flower bed. Great camera work. And back here is where I keep my winter sewing jugs and um, there's also a million old windows that I had these dreams of making a greenhouse out of and uh, slowly they're just breaking over there so. Uh, I think that was maybe an ambitious project for me. Um, plus, I, I guess you have to have permits for that. Ugh, it's a bureaucracy. Anyway, so I do have a few things sprouting going on in the jugs at that time, and there's more now. So it definitely does work. And these beautiful thyme plants stayed alive all winter in my shed. I um, did not expect that, but <laughs> here they are. I got them last year. Um, one of them's not doing too good now, but the other one's still hanging in there. So this was the next project that I had to do. Uh, I was setting up the little greenhouse out here. I use this to acclimate my plants to the UV light because even when you're using, you know, grow lights that are daylight balanced, it's not the same as the sun. So once my seedlings are, you know, starting to get a little big and I've popped them out of their seed flats, I will start taking them outside for increasing amounts of time uh, just let them get used to that light. Usually I will wait until the sun isn't directly on this side of the house at first and then every day it's just you know you add a few hours on and it happens pretty quickly especially with these cold weather tolerant vegetables and herbs. So these guys are already living outside full time right now. So Aiden did help me even more. We got a little bit further back in this bed all the way to the existing thyme bush. So um, I have to do a little thinking about this area and I'm gonna come back to it soon, but that's as far as I got there. So I'll give you a little peek of where my seed room was at um, right in the beginning of March, mid-March. I think this was mid-March. Um, you can see my new light from Hidden Harvest. I This thing is crazy. I love it so much. I'm wicked psyched about it. Um, so that has been maintaining all of these seeds really well and, and quite a distance away from them. So I was very impressed with that. Um, and as you can see, everything's doing really well. These are a lot of annual flowers. Um, and there's a little bit of kale in there, some lettuce, um, I believe some herbs. So since this filming, I have um, transferred a lot of these and started a bunch more stuff. So you guys will see that pretty soon as well. But yeah, this light's really, it's, it's pretty banging. I don't know if he has it listed yet, but I'm sure I'll have more info for you soon. Uh, here's the old reliable hidden harvest panel and it is keeping my coleus seedlings happy. So here's what the catnip seedlings looked like before Jack got to them. <laughs> More on that later. And uh, this was the progress of the coleus seedlings that I've been growing. Some of those are gonna go outside. I am definitely gonna keep a pot or two for an indoor house plant. So you guys will be able to see how they do in the long term. I'm also curious. I think they'll do well because they were born here. So they're used to my environment. So now I'm gonna give you a little uh, slow motion time lapse of these greens and sweet peas and stuff. You'll see how they grow over the weeks that I had been recording for this vlog. That first overnight in the greenhouse is always kind of nerve wracking for the gardeners. Um, we, we just, you know, you're always afraid you're gonna wake up to a bunch of dead plants, but as you can see, it is definitely a little warm in there because the sun was beating on the side of the house. I do need to water, but everything held on. It did okay. And um, everything is pretty much acclimated now. So you'll see how they grow over the next few weeks. And I'm just working on 
getting these guys comfortable with being outside and uh, cats are definitely comfortable being outside. If you've never grown lettuce, it's really fun. It's very easy. It happens really fast. You can even eat them as microgreens. It's just like instant, you know, instant gratification. Satisfaction? That was the word I was going to say. I'm not redoing this voiceover. It's not happening. So you can see what I'm working with out there. And you guys are going to come along with me while I try to turn this into a garden oasis. Um, it is a really tall order <laughs> that I'm trying to do here. So it was finally time, I finally had the stuff to start working on my very first raised bed. I'm going to do a square foot, four by four bed. I'm following the square foot gardening method, uh, mostly to the T. Um, the way I ended up planting it was a little bit off, but um, you know, close enough. We're close enough. It's fine. Um, so I'm basically trying to fill this thing up. I had this old bale of peat moss, so please do not come for me <laughs> about peat moss sustainability, because I know, I know. Um, I'm planning to use cocoa in the next uh, in the next bed, so. But I don't want to go to waste, so there it is. It's getting used, um, and my brother-in-law helped me out screwing these boards together um, because I have weakling little hands and give up easy, so <laughs> he helped me out. And um, over the weeks, I managed to fill the bed. I did have to um, use a bunch of different stuff. I had to use some cheap topsoil. I mixed it in with compost, with manure, with um, more expensive potting soil. So I just kind of gathered supplies. Um, thankfully, I got everything before uh, craziness ensued and uh, we all needed to stay the hell home. So glad that I got that done. So what I'm doing is raking in the compost um, awkwardly so I could show you on camera, but um, normally I don't rake like that. <laughs> just one woman show here, you know. But yeah, look at how much better that looks even just putting in a little bit of organic compost and manure and a little bit of potting or topsoil, garden soil, whatever it was that I threw in there. I can't remember. Um, so over the weeks, I just kind of kept pulling weeds out of this and we're doing all right. Here's some surprise daffodils that uh, just randomly popped up in the heap over here. So uh, that heap is full of surprises. Last year there was a family of bunnies. This year we have daffodils. And there's another peek into the winter sowing jugs. They are coming along. Every time I go out there, one more of them is sprouting. So I'm, I'm pretty excited that this method works. I'm going to do some flowers, I think, this week in there. So I could maybe get a couple weeks head start on those too. We'll see. Oh, but look what I made, guys. Super pumped about this. I made a really simple low tunnel out of PVC, rebar, and row cover. And I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. And I also covered my bed in chicken wire to make sure that the cat that comes to my yard to poop uh, doesn't do so in the giant litter box I just made him. And there's a little look at that. Now I would have filmed the step-by-step, -step, but this is my first time doing these. So the next time that I do it, I'll be able to give you a, a more um, educated tutorial on how to make them. But um, if you guys have questions, I can do a little video about it, no problem. So I'm finally tackling that overgrown thyme. I wish I had done it a little earlier because I ended up having to chop off some living stuff that um, I meant to bring in the house. And I even made a little pile of it and then I left it outside. Because that is, that is what happens to me, folks. I uh, have the best of intentions and then I forget to, to act on them. So ideally you really want to do this in the fall um, before the whole season starts, um, but you know, I wasn't thinking, I forgot. And my last project for this day was to get this uh, puzzling chicken wire off of this Japanese maple. Um, I'm not a big fan of Japanese maple. I like them visually, they're beautiful, but um, they're very invasive and yeah, but I feel bad for it. So I had to get it out of there, you know? Keep an eye out for the next part of the garden vlog. I will actually be getting some plants in the ground. It's time, guys. It's time. The soil is finally warm enough for me to start getting some of the cool weather tolerant things in, and I can't wait to show you guys. Thank you so much to everybody that has been super supportive of these outside plant vlogs. Um, I know that all plants in some sense are outside plants, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, I know a lot of people are excited to see if I can pull off um, what I have in my head. So 
you and me both guys thanks for coming on this journey with me and i will see you in the next one bye